Hey guys, my name is Umkar Jagdare and I'm coming at you from Detroit, Michigan. And today I'm going to talk to you about civil engineering versus computer science. And I've been getting a lot of questions from people who are in civil engineering field and even other fields like mechanical or chemical engineering. And they're asking like, should I do my field, my undergrad, whatever I've studied in my undergrad, or should I jump into computer science because there is plenty of opportunity in computer science in US. So I really wanted to break it down today and give you a perspective and give you my perspective and what I have learned in over the last 10 years uh, I have been in US. Um, but a little bit background about me, I've done my undergrad in US in civil engineering. So it took me about five years to finish that. And since then I've been working for over the last five years in civil engineering as a highway engineer. Um, on top of that, I also did my master's of science in project management. Uh, last two years I've been studying master's of science in project management. So I'm going to break down my experience and I'm going to also tell you in the end what I would do if I had to do all of this all over again. Would I change my decision of being a civil engineer or and would I do computer science? So civil engineering is less competitive compared to computer science. The reason is because the number of people graduating as civil engineers are less compared to number of people graduate from computer science degrees or IT or you know those kind of fields. So the number of people graduating are less here and here are more and I feel like that's why there is more competition there. There are more people applying for same jobs. In civil, whereas I feel from my experience, there are less number of people applying for same number of jobs. The reason is like, for example, in my own company, we have so many positions open and at times we don't even have people applying for those positions. Um, I'm not talking about just plain civil engineering. There are, uh, there are uh, like, you know, under civil engineering, there are like environmental engineering, there are transportation engineering, there is geotechnical engineering. So there are a lot of positions where we are not able to find good people. Even at times people will apply, but we may not be able to find a good candidate who we are looking for, who may be able to do the work they are saying they, are, they will be able to do. It, at times it's hard to find that. So I would say there is less competition in civil engineering compared to computer science. Now, but here is also, you have to also understand second point I wanna come at like, because there is more competition in computer science, you also have to understand there are more opportunities there. So what do I mean by that is like there are more companies who use computer science people like tech companies, Microsoft, Google, all these huge companies, but not only that, like for example, Ford, even though it's an automotive company, they need computer science people. There is a company called Bedrock in Detroit, which is a construction company, but they need people who are in computer science. There is Quicken Loans in Detroit area, which is a loan company, which is a finance company, but they need computer science people. So all these companies like Ally, it's a loan company, they need computer science people. So what happens is every single company, if you look at, they need computer science people. Every single company doesn't need civil engineers. That's the difference you have to understand. So I would say computer science has more opportunities compared to civil engineering. As a matter of fact, you know, when I was, I started applying for jobs in Detroit area, there were only about 200 to 300 companies in Detroit area where I would, I was able to apply for jobs in civil engineering. And as a matter of fact, I had applied all of them. But here is a difference. Out of those 300 companies, only maybe 20 to 30 actually sponsored H1B people. Now, you don't have to go through that kind of fights when you are in computer science. As a matter of fact, in computer science, there are consultancies, there are IT consultancies, there are like so many different ways you can get your H1B, so many different ways you can be placed into a company. So you have more opportunities in computer science than compared to civil engineering. Okay, now let me take a step back and tell you that, hey guys, I'm not putting civil engineering down here. I'm showing you the reality of life in the US. The, and I, I'm also telling you from my experience and what I have known. So I may be wrong. I may be looking at computer science as this fancy thing which other people are doing where things are really great. Okay, I'm not saying that. It's going to be difficult in there as well. Now, all right, so let's take a step back and talk about other things. So here's one more thing I have to understand. I don't see computer science people quitting their jobs and getting into civil engineering. But I know a lot of people quitting civil engineering and getting into computer science, IT, business analytics, so that they can make more income. Okay, so 
saying that that means there is more income in computer science compared to civil engineering most of the friends i know in computer science usually make 20 30 thousand dollars more than at my level so within graduate who are in detroit area for example you know they have two to three years of experience and they are already making 90 95 thousand dollars in computer science whereas if you're in civil engineering it might take you four or five years and a pe license an fe and pe license you have to give for you to make 75 to 80 thousand dollars now if you are you know maybe uh, states which are highly paid like florida texas california the incomes may be a little bit higher new york new jersey they may be higher i'm talking about states which are not highly paid which are average paid okay delaware uh, new york so like normal states you know new connecticut wisconsin uh, michigan indiana ohio these kind of states i'm talking about okay now let's jump into H1B challenges. I want to share the H1B challenges. So in civil, you will have some H1B challenges. Not every company you apply to will know what sponsorship is, how to sponsor people, because they have rarely, like some of them have never had any international people work for them. So when I was working, when I was going to college, uh, when I was, I went to like work at different companies, there were a couple of times when I had to drop those companies because they had never sponsored H1B. They didn't knew what it takes. They didn't knew the intricacies of it. And it's literally me teaching them what happens in sponsorship. I feel in IT companies that usually doesn't happen, you know, because most of them have already employed international people. Not only that, there are IT consultancies which you can use to break that barrier of H1B. So you can go to an IT consultancy, join another company, get your H1B from there, and eventually move your job. So that may be an option for you, so that you make sure that your H1B is taken care of. As a matter of fact, last year, a friend of mine who worked with me in the same company I worked at, he got laid off from my company. He couldn't find a job for three months. He went into an IT consultancy, he got his H1B. Here's a great story. Last year when he was laid off, was he was making $60,000. Within a year and a half of him working really diligently, consistently on IT programs and uh, more of like, you know, uh, cloud-based computing, he tripled his income. So currently he's making $100,000, $180,000 per year. And he's working for a multinational bank. So that's the difference, you know, that's the opportunity you have. In the same time, I've maybe increased my income by 30-40%, whereas he has increased his income 300%. So that opportunity you will not get in civil engineering. Even if you jump jobs, you won't be able to get $120,000 without that experience. How will you get that? A friend of mine who he has three, four years of experience, he jumped a job, went from 90 to 130, but he was still already making 90, 80, 90. So, you know, that is possible, you can do that, but it's rare. And not only that, you have to be a really good person. You re have to be a really good candidate. You have to be able to sell yourself. Not everybody is able to do that. Most engineers, most people watching my videos are average people, are average engineers. You know, let's be honest, folks. If you are the top and the best, you don't need this information what I'm giving, right? Because usually, like what I've noticed is like these top candidates and stuff like that, they usually have their own way of finding information. They'll usually read it. They'll usually talk to people who are already in the US. They usually connect with professors on LinkedIn. They have a different way to approach things. So it's fine. It's fine. I'm not talking here about Stanford graduates. I'm talking about people who are going to normal universities, average civil engineers, average people, and above average, you know? Now, okay. So, who should do civil engineering? Let me, let me say that. Because, you know, if everybody did computer science, we wouldn't have any civil engineers. So, I feel, in my opinion, you should only do civil engineering, or you should do civil engineering, if civil engineering really is your passion and you really enjoy civil engineering, like you wake up in the morning and you want to be a civil engineer, you wake up in the morning and you want to design things, or or someone who doesn't like computer science. If you don't like some computer science, do civil engineering. If you like civil engineering more and you hate computer science, you don't want to code, you don't want to get into those kind of things, it's fine, don't do it. Go ahead, do your civil engineering. Understand, the path is will be a little bit difficult, but hey, when you love something, it's actually it actually becomes easier for you. And that's the difference between 
you know when i when people like people will message me on instagram and they'll say hey brother like you know uh, i'm hearing a lot lot of things from different people that you know you should move into computer science i already started my civil engineering degree and you should move into computer science now the reason that person is saying that is because they really are not passionate about it they they came to you as just to get a good job eventually their eventual goal is just to get a good job and figure out life when you're passionate about something folks you don't ask those kind of questions if it's difficult the way you see things is like i will figure it out i don't care i will figure it out because i'm passionate about it so you have to genuinely ask yourself are you really passionate about civil engineering or are you passionate about making income are you passionate about making a good income so that you can enjoy your life you know so after let's look at what advice i would give to myself if i was 5 years down like you know i, w- I would go back 6 7 8 years back in time okay here's what i would tell myself today i know myself very well my today my passion is my today my passion is my youtube my uh, free time what i get to do in my free time traveling meeting new people spending time with family so i know that is my goal and my priority today so what i would tell myself is like hey y- I want to make the maximum maximum amount of money in the shortest amount of time. That is my goal. So for me personally, it doesn't matter if I'm doing computer science, if I'm doing project management, if I'm doing product management or if I'm doing civil engineering. Whichever field that gives me the most amount of income in the shortest amount of time and I get to enjoy my work. I don't want a stressful work. I want to enjoy my work. I will go ahead and do it. And here's the thing, I totally believe even though I know a lot of people complain about computer science and stressful and stuff like that. I know you can find a good job in there. I know you can find a job which can satisfy you and your needs and also pay you a little bit higher income. I totally believe that. So, saying that, I remember my mentor four or five years back I was driving him to an airport. He's financially free man. He retired in his 30s. He told me, "Omkar, why don't you do computer science?" why don't you do a masters in computer science and here's what i told him chetan i love engineering i love engineering i love civil engineering and i enjoy doing that fast forward this is 4 5 years down the road i'll tell you folks that's bullshit more than my engineering more than my job what i love is income let's be honest i i i'm fighting at my job also i want more income right i'm also fighting at my jobs for bigger raises i want to i'm giving extra exams i'm studying more so that why i can get a higher income so let's be honest at the end of the day if your goal and my goal is to make more money in the shortest amount of time it makes sense to be in tech now computer science is not only the option you can choose there are multiple options you can choose one is computer science one is product management one is project management being a scrum master there are many different fields you can choose so computer science is not the only answer coding is not the only answer for you to make those higher incomes so this is where you need to study and you need to understand how you can take steps so that you can put yourself in a better situation than other people okay so don't be a fool and you know sometimes we make decisions because we are emotional about something don't be an emotional fool hmm? think about it make a rational decision and do what is good for you i think that's all i had for you today i love talking to you i'll see you in the next video peace out